If you've never been excited about a little black box, now's the time to get a little excited. Um, let me go ahead and just spruce it up a little bit real quick. Hold on one second. Woo, there we go. Uh, and that's right, we're talking about a new desktop today. And I'm gonna tell you why this little guy right here might just be your next big purchase. All right, today we're checking out the new Dell Precision 3650. It's been out for a few months already, but it's worth noting how impressive the system specs are and the performance are for the size of this workstation here uh, because it is absolutely tiny. When I first saw this and they, I got to open the box, I was like, uh, where's the workstation at? Um, but this little guy here is super tiny um, and very light, and it's actually probably one of the the coolest workstations I've seen in a long time because it packs the power um, of a full desktop workstation that you might have at your home office. And I think what's great about this little guy here is that you can literally pack it up, take it anywhere you want, uh, and get that beautiful performance that you would normally get from your desktop. All right, let's go ahead and talk specs for this computer because it packs a punch. Uh, in this guy, we've got an eight core, 11th generation Xeon uh, 3.6 base clock. Um, with a turbo speed of 5.2 gigahertz. It's got 64 gigabytes of DDR4 ECC RAM, uh, an NVIDIA RTX A5000 with 24 gigabytes of video memory, which is freaking amazing. Um, and it also comes uh, with a two terabyte Gen 4 NVMe SSD. And we also have the optional Thunderbolt 4 ports that are included with this with a thousand watt power supply. Um, this guy does come with two PCIe slots, one's a Gen 4, one's a Gen 3. It also comes with two NVMe slots, one's a Gen 4, and one's a Gen 3 as well. Uh, one of the things that's great about this is the form factor, um, but they give you a lot of different tools and a lot of different ports um, in such a small package. There are a ton of different uses for this workstation, and I would say it has a great potential for a lot of different players, whether you're in the video realm, photo, uh, programming, 3D modeling, or motion graphics. This little guy here packs a punch and really makes it um, so that you don't have to have a huge desktop workstation to do what you want to do. Uh, when you're talking about handling large resolution files like 8K, 10K, 12K files, um, full res, uh, raw, this guy handles it all, and it's really impressive. Um, I think obviously one of the big selling points to it is that it is um, a very small unit. So the form factor is a big draw to it, um, as well as being a Gen 4. Uh, the speed that you get off of the, the Gen 4 for GPU use, CPU use, uh, as well as the memory and the storage really helps just take this to the moon. And you'll find it's incredibly speedy. When it comes to the raw performance of this machine, I tested it with a ton of different footage, some of that being Longop H.265 from the 8K Sony Alpha 1, and even with fusion elements added to it on an 8K timeline, the performance was impressive, giving you real-time playback in most instances, even with a bunch of GPU and RAM heavy elements added to it. The render time for 8K footage is nearly 2 to 1 in an ungraded export, so with a 60 second 8K clip, it only takes about 30 seconds to render out. These type of render speeds are really impressive, especially for how long it can take to decode long gob formats on other mobile or even desktop workstations. Another eye-opening benchmark is just how fast the system boots. Like, it's ridiculously fast, especially for a professional grade workstation. The average boot time for this computer is only 10 seconds. Let's break down the good and not so good of the system. What's great about this system is that it carries Gen 4 speeds for memory, GPU, CPU, and for storage. It's great for mobile long-term productions. It's also great for someone that's looking just to get into editing and offers a ton of extra power without taking up too much space. Another great benefit to this system is that it's easy to self-upgrade. So if you're looking to add more memory, storage, or even additional GPU or just swap out the GPU, you can definitely do that using this model. It's also perfect for video editing, 3D modeling, motion graphics, and ultra high-end resolution photography and non-AI programming. And of course, the last thing that makes this system great is that it's ultra small and super portable. Now, here are some of the drawbacks. It only has two PCIe slots, which makes it tough to add extra components. There's only one Gen 4 slot, the other's Gen 3, so you're only gonna get the speed out of one of those PCIe slots. The other downside of the system is that it has a low core count. So if you're looking for more cores with work with AI and data learning, this system will still get the job done. However, it may not be the best option for you. So if you're in the market for a really nice mid-range to high-end professional workstation that you can take anywhere on the go, um, easily fits into a Pelican case or even a backpack depending on how big it is, um, you could literally have a workstation uh, that's capable of doing high-end cinematography, videography, photos, 3D animation, uh, motion graphics, 
anything and everything, um, pretty much anywhere on the go. I think one of the most eye-opening things about this workstation is I put it up against my own personal workstation that I custom built, uh, which is a Threadripper 32 core with 256 gigs of RAM, dual RTX 3090s, um, and some really nice Gen 4 NVMe SSDs. And this little guy actually outperformed it inside of DaVinci Resolve uh, by about uh, 10 to 15%, which is really impressive considering that this little guy costs about half as much as I spent on building the other one. Uh, one thing I will say is that the majority of the price for this uh, particular workstation and most workstations in general right now um, are the GPUs. And if you have a GPU already, if you're using an RTX um, 3090 or 3080, or you have a more professional brand with the, the A3000, 5000, or 6000, um, you can fit most of those brands in here. I know you can't fit the 3090, um, but what I would recommend is uh, if the price is an issue, go ahead and just remove or subtract the GPU out of it because it's almost 50% of the price of this um, tower. And then you can just put your own GPU in it and um, still have all that power and all the performance that comes with uh, the Dell Precision 3650, um, but you can save some money in the long run. Um, that being said, if you don't have a GPU already, um, and GPUs are obviously, if you do know right now, they're a hot ticket item and uh, they're very hard to get. And so they're obviously marked up at a premium right now. And I will say that the value for this being at around uh, MSRP of $7,000 um, really is quite comparable to what you would find if you built it yourself, um, or actually it's a little bit cheaper depending on which route you take. So the price performance to the dollar is actually pretty damn good. Um, but again, if you're trying to save some money, just take the GPU card out and uh, put your own in if it fits in here. Like I said, a 3090 is not gonna fit in here just because it's so small and so compact. Um, but you can try to look at the other models. They've got a whole list on their site of the cards that are compatible with it, so check it out. Um, otherwise though, really impressed with this guy. If you have any questions about the unit, just hit me up down below in the comments. I'll be happy to answer them. Um, and as always, uh, thanks for watching. And if you like what you saw, please like and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Have a great day.